Hello my soccer universe, with a match day and a few makeup games to go, it's more or less all decided. Manchester City are your Premier League champions, we have more or less the four teams that go into the Champions League, with two newcomers from last season, which I think is uh, exciting, three newcomers actually, that's a pretty, turn, a pretty big turnaround. Uh, relegation battle looks very much decided as a little bit up for grabs uh, on uh, for the European spots, the remaining European spots. Uh, Liverpool will probably only go Europa League and then we have to see the rest. But frankly, I've been losing a little bit my interest in the Premier League over the past two weeks, which is a shame because this was actually a really exciting season. I, we, are, we were looking at a really exciting relegation battle. We thought there might be a proper title race on or a surprise champion. And in the end, one, <laughs> one game to go and it's all looks done. I think that probably the overarching theme over the last two weeks is, you know, we already knew that Arsenal will not win the title, but the way they handed it to City was a little bit anticlimactic by losing a so big at home to Brighton, which definitely put it then on City's doorstep and then also losing at Forest. Definitely a little bit uh, bluesy there and then Spurs, their arrival, completely tanking the season uh, in serious danger of not even making the Conference League. Which I think this is this is a disaster on a whole different level. On the other side, you might say, well, uh, at least you can focus then on the league only because the conference league might only be a distraction. Yeah, I can see that argument as well. But uh, before we go in the games, I have been talking mostly not so good stuff about Manchester City as of late. Although I did lot of the applaud uh, the game against Real Madrid, but um, all criticism from my part of silence, mainly the financial doping and yes, there's still the, uh, the verdicts. Uh, we're waiting on all these charges against them from the Premier League. Uh, so that all aside, I have to give huge credit to Manchester City for once again turning it on after a loss to Spurs of all teams, but Guardiola loves to lose against Spurs. And winning, I think, 12 out of 13, something like that. A crazy run uh, going forward. And they want to do that every season. But I have to say the bigger thing is that for me, Guardiola uh, is become, is no, I mean, he is, he is already a world-class man, 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 manager, but he's probably among the world-class managers, the one that can adapt the most because uh, he's not playing Barcelona style. He's just adapting. He won last year the league with Gabriel Jesus up front who scored eight goals. Now he has Erling Haaland. And yes, I hear the um, uh, people saying, yeah, now he has a focal point. Honestly, for the league, it didn't really matter. And that's the strongest league in the world. And uh, yes, Holland scored a million goals and gave them uh, maybe something more to talk, talk about. Because um, fr frankly, outside of De Bruyne, who did not have all the great seasons uh, as, 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 as of late, uh, there was not really a real star to talk about. Now we can all talk and uh, marvel at Erling Haaland, which is maybe the one uh, difference. But Guardiola does as Guardiola does. Also, the management uh, of of squad. You know, he got rid of Jacques and Celo. He's kind of rude, ruthless. He also, uh, you know, Phil Foden was a big factor last season. Now it's he turned Jack Grealish into a completely different player. So huge credit. Also. Um, while we talk about financial doping with City, I also definitely have to say that when it comes to transfer spendings, uh, they're not that that crazy. Yes, they had the spree last season where they got Grealish and, and so on, but this year they had a, a, actually a positive net spend because they did it actually smart and they got rid of guys and, and so on. And, they, and they're not uh, vetted to players. They just say, okay, if you're not good enough or if you want to leave, go. I think that's pretty remarkable. He's rebuilding players and also the players that he gets in, they might be promising. They usually take a year, except in Erling Haaland, uh, to get going. Uh, but he makes them into better, better players, which is a sign of a really, really good manager. I think Jurgen Klopp has been doing something similar for Liverpool, where players that you thought are good, good players, he turned them into stars and uh, Pep Guardiola is doing the same thing. So for that reason alone, I want to now congratulate Manchester City to the third championship in a row. This is uh, only a few times that you have a three-peat and this is the first time that they are doing that despite all their dom, their dom dominance. So um, that's a pretty, credit, pretty big credit to them. 
And I wanna for once leave it at that and really uh, focus. You have built probably the best team in the world. Yes, I'm. I personally might not be all that excited, but if, when I saw the performance against Real Madrid, yeah, this was pretty special. And you, it's one down, three to go. That's I think where where we have to leave it. Uh, we have two more games, and they can uh, secure a second ever treble, and it's against the Manchester teams. But let's go through the games, and you know we have uh, more than a week to make up uh, from. On the weekend of uh, May 13th, so mid-May week, week, weekend, it started with Sam Allardyce facing Newcastle in a more or less must-win game for Leeds, who took a lead through Ailing, and then Bamford missed a penalty. Callum Wilson though makes his penalty just three minutes later, and it's 1-1. Uh, he converts another one, make 2-1. Rasmus Christens pulls one back, but you know, the stupid Firpo foul. Leeds were pressing, but they cannot get the win. And at that point, to me, it was relatively clear that Leeds are not going anywhere. And yeah, you may have seen it. There is a Leeds jersey hang, hang, hang. They will probably hang for one more. Uh, and then let's hope they will get back up again. Uh, Villa... Big shot in the arm for their European uh, ambitions. Beating Spurs 2-1. Uh, Rams in Douglas Lewis scoring the two goals. Harry Kane only a adding a late one. I had to chuckle when I saw the 2-2 between Chelsea and Forest because f finally Chelsea are scoring goals. However, they, they give them uh, they give up goals like Craig Chris as well. And it's you now year give uh, four for first the lead. Sterling after have turned turns around. He has not been. He has been more or less a flop for Chelsea, Chelsea as well. But it's really hard in this team of uh, bloated up and mismanaged to the nth degree. And then Avonie scores another one. It's 2-2 and Forest get huge points in the relegation battle. Because, uh, you know, between Leeds United and Forest, we all thought that Forest might actually have the um, uh, worst draw. But no, they actually did it quite well. A uh, huge win also for United, 2-0 over Wolves. Nothing special, Martial and Garnacho scoring the goals. However, uh, that more or less secure, was on the way of securing Champions League for them. Uh, Brentford on their way to be, become the second best team in London, 2-0 over West Ham United, meaning West Ham United is still not out of trouble. However, West Ham, I think at that point, was probably a little bit more focusing on the Conference League semi-final. Everton, also relegation threat, played it actually quite well for uh, long stretches against City. And then Gundogan scores. A brilliant goal, Haaland doubles it up. And there we go, and Gundogan another one. And that's probably the final uh, stepping stone for Gundogan, uh, who is another one of, of, of those players that, yes, he was a talented player. He became a great player, but now Guardiola says, no, we're not going to give you a two-year contract, or the management says, and he's going to leave. That's how you uh, go. And... City will not be the worst for it, although he was a brilliant player for them. And I don't know how much pressure that put on Arsenal, but Brighton went to the Emirates and just... 3-0. Yes, uh, it was for a long time only a one-goal game, but Brighton were that much better for most of the, of the time. And CISO giving them the lead just after they have, and then uh, Undov and Ustupinian make it a scoreline that... Potentially a tad too high, but overall Brighton fully deserved their win. And, you know, there's a whole Brighton love fest going on at the moment. And the Zerbi is hailed as this uh, wonderful manager. Um, yes, and they deserve all these praises. I just want to see how this will go uh, going forward, if, if they can build on that. But uh, they will be playing in Europe next season, which means I finally have to get a Brighton jersey. And then Leicester got into more, more, more trouble. Uh, with Liverpool also going away from home, Curtis Jones scoring two, both assists by Salah uh, just before the half. And that was that, Alexander-Arnold adding a third. Uh, so easy win for them, putting Leicester in more trouble. This Brighton team that we lauded so much uh, getting flattened by Newcastle United. And that's exactly what, what, what I mean with Brighton. They can be brilliant on one day, but then sometimes they're not quite living up. But you know, I don't want to make too big of a deal out of that because uh, Newcastle also needed the win to get into Champions League and they are a better team. And that's probably, uh, again, money, money, money is the overarching theme here. However, like City, I think Eddie Howe has done a great job at Newcastle, but yes, they have the re re resources, so it's definitely not a fairy tale. 
It was comprehensive uh, in the end, but the last two goals came, of course, in the 89th and the 91st. Uh, so, yeah. Then, on uh, the past weekend, Spurs played a good first half, only led 1-0 by through a hurricane goal, multiple other uh, missing, and then uh, Mbwemo scores two and turns it around for Brentford, and Brentford completely then take it away from Spurs, and Spurs' season is going down the drain. There's a real, real chance that they're going to miss out on Europe, as I said before. Mbwemo uh, also then assists the third one, although he could have gone for it himself. But, you know, that also shows what a good player is. We also have with Brentford that, of course, Ivan Toni uh, is not banned until January uh, because of betting. Uh, I'm going to be curious what they will do with him in that case. But, you know, um, I think Brentford... Uh, very well set to actually overcome this, I would think. Uh, another uh, uh, win for United, 1-0 at Bournemouth, and now it really looks good, good for them. The Casemiro goal was just uh, something else, how it bounces off a uh, um, Bournemouth player, and then he just uh, karate kicks it or whatever in the internet. I love that one. And then they just sail it, smooth sailing home, in a, almost smooth sailing home. Uh, and United are also going back to the Champions League. Um, a London derby between Palace and Fulham ends 2-2. Liverpool only a 1-1 uh, with Bobby Firmino getting his send-off goal very late on uh, emotional scenes. However, um, Villa probably should have led 2-0 at the point with Oli Watkins missing a penalty. Uh, Ramsey giving give, give them, them the lead. Um, the result more or less means that uh, Villa still have to fight for the European spot and Liverpool are m most definitely not going to the Champions League, although they have a smidgen of a chance uh, still there. Uh, Everton equalized very, very late against Wolves and those were crucial points. Sometimes we always sneer at draws, draws are points lost, but in this case it was a big point because it actually, with all the other results going, is that Everton enjoy a relative safety that they probably wouldn't have otherwise. Uh, and then the late game, Arsenal cannot buy a win at the moment. I think their season is gone. Ateta was also doing a few changes here, here and there. Uh, it was the typical uh, Forest game. They show up in front of goal once, one year scores, and Arsenal have no way of countering that. Also, Odegaard is leaking a lot of goals as of late uh, by giving away balls uh, while, while they are all moving forward and they're caught on transition. That's something they have to definitely improve. The big story here, though, is that Forest have secured survival with that result. And that is a rather remarkable turnaround if you think about it, because not a few months ago we all thought that Forest are for sure going down, and that's the one team that there's certainty that they will get relegated. No, Forest had a remarkable turn turnaround and they are safe with a game to go. That's something we did not really, really expect. And late. So big credit, big congratulations. Steve Cooper has done a good job. And what I also want to say, he was on the verge of getting sacked a few times. But unlike their opponents, they did not. They stuck with him. Again, of course, he's also popular with the fans. And that, in the end, pay paid off. You do not need to fire a coach. Just hang on. All these changes, I'm looking at you, Leeds. All these changes don't pay off. Big one in the relegation battle was West Ham United's 3-1 over Leeds, where Rodrigo had actually a pretty nice goal to give it the lead. And West Ham, you know, come, coming off the win at Alkmaar. However, then for some reason, they completely imploded. Declan Rice gets an equalizer and then Gerard Jared Bowen and Lanzini make it uh, a result that actually was more or less deserved and Leeds at this moment look definitely down and out. I don't see a way back for them. Uh, we had then Brighton securing their European spot with a 3-1 over relegated Southampton and Manchester City. Julian Alvarez, who is on the verge of doing something that no one else has achieved so far, winning a treble plus the World Cup in a season. That has not happened before. The only one that I can think of is PSV Eindhoven when the um, uh, PSV Eindhoven players were the... I don't want to say the backbone of the Dutch squad in 88 that won the um, Euros, but with the World Cup we have not seen that, that one. And he was a, he, he was an important player for this Argentina team. However, for Manchester City he's only a bit part player. So, you know, it's kind of weird, but he gets this one goal. Probably should have uh, gotten a second one uh, later on. I mean, he got one, but it was disallowed. 
But even with a second string squad, uh, City were easing past Chelsea and then they got the trophy lift already. Still think trophy lifts should happen at the end of the season, or the last day of the season, but I understand you want to do it in front of your home fans. To be honest, it did not seem all that exciting, uh, this crowd. Yes, they stormed the field, blah, 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 but um, you could feel um, two things. I mean, A, we have seen so many titles already, uh, but also the second one that, um, you know, there are two more steps to go and the big one will be the Champions League. I would, yes, travel, great, but I think if they could choose between those two, the Champions League one, even though it means uh, beating, uh, winning a Manchester final in the final at Wembley, so yeah, give or take. But, you know, it was what it was, and Manchester City are your new Premier League champions, now fully confirmed with the trophy lifted. And, yeah, everything looking good at the Etihad at the moment. And then uh, I saw a little, little bit of the Newcastle against a Leicester game. It was more or less last chance for Leicester to get a little bit in. They get a point at Newcastle. Newcastle secured a European spot with that. But it was not a great game to watch overall. So in the standings now, after all that, we have City confirmed. Arsenal are in the Champions League back uh, with Newcastle back. And yes, there's only three point difference between Manchester United and Liverpool with Manchester United having to play a game more. They get a point there they have it already secured otherwise a little bit of a miracle needs to happen uh villa are now ahead of spurs brighton are already secured in europe that's uh kind of kind of big and if you look at the bottom uh bottom everton uh yes technically not quite out of it but if we look then at the in a bit at um expected results uh, at, at of the upcoming games um you will you will see they have a relatively easy final schedule versus leicester Give themselves a shot, but it all doesn't look good. Um, Leicester and Leeds will be going down and Villa will probably pip Spurs to the final spot. So let's look at uh, the final match, uh, the final matches with Brighton against Manchester City. That is something I would have loved to see earlier on, exactly when it was scheduled, uh, kind of late April, and then United play at home to Chelsea. So uh, a kind of a big name game. United need, need, need a point and they go to... Um, and they go to the Champions League. And then we see here the last match. Then it's probably more or less... We have Villa against Brighton. Uh, not, not this. And Brentford against Manchester City. Uh, Brentford could actually also make it in the, in the Europa League. And Spurs have to play Leeds United. So this is for going uh, into Europe. And then uh, we also have for relegation with Leeds United against Spurs. We have Everton against Bournemouth. Who are more or less a team on the beach if you would like so uh they should actually get uh the win there and leicester play against west ham united a west ham united team that i also don't think i think that leeds united definitely have the worst program there and therefore their chances of surviving are the slimmest that was it for me i probably will do a video next week uh but it might be a short one or i can't even wait after for the after the fa cup final but i think i might Let's see how it will go. Maybe after the FA Cup final, which also comes in a week after. We already said it's a Manchester Derby. Um, I have to see how the scheduling goes. In any case, give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a line below if uh, you want to add anything. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.